Hi everyone, I'm Nian Yulei, a PhD student from Peking University. In this presentation, I'll briefly describe the work collaborated with Singapore University of Technology and Design and Collegiate Malang University. This work is about explanation for human on the loop, a probabilistic model checking approach. And this presentation has three parts. Firstly, I will introduce what is human on the loop, why we need explanation. In the second part, I will formally define what constitutes an explanation and how the explanation will affect the system behaviors. The third part is focusing on how we can use probabilistic model, especially mark of decision process, to reason about when we should provide explanation. Okay, let's start. Automated system, sometimes we call it self-adaptive systems that try to eliminate the need of human interference in order to achieve particular goals, including performance, security, fault management, etc. One typical example is the self-driving system. The motivation behind this is that we do not want human operators because humans are easily making mistakes and human error accounts for over 40% of system failures. Also, operators are very, very expensive. These reasons lead to an automated system view by replacing the operators with a controller. However, every coin has two sides. Human actually can provide some expertise that cannot be easily automated. Also, human can detect the problems that the system may not be aware of. So, systems can actually benefit a lot from some human involvement. One way to achieve this synergy for the system is by placing an operator in the loop between the self-adaptation framework and the environment as a deciding authority. A variant of human in the loop is human on the loop, where the operator plays a less central role. In human on the loop, the operator periodically monitors the interaction between the system and the environment, and interrupts only when necessary to avert potentially malicious behavior. In this work, we focus on self-adaptive systems that employ a human on the loop approach. Here is a typical closed loop in which a human operator is engaged. The dynamic behaviors from the environment are periodically monitored by a set of sensors. Given the sensor's volume, the controller will perform an analysis of available actions and their potential outcome on the system utility, then plan corresponding adaptation decisions to be enacted by the actuators. The role of human operator on the loop is to observe the adaptation decision made by the controller and determine whether this decision is appropriate or potentially erroneous. For example, an adaptation may degrade the system utility or lead the system into an unsafe state. If the operator does not understand the system decisions or does not believe the system is doing the right thing, the operator may intervene in this control loop by overriding the commands sent to the actuators or, in the worst case, shutting down the system. Actually, this is a well-known problem called automation surprise that occurs when the machine behaves differently than its operator expects. And we identified two reasons for this surprise. The first one is that operator only knows partial information about the machine, such as operator B shown in this figure. The second reason is that operator may know some additional information from the environment that the machine is unaware of as shown in the yellow zone here. Then, each operator could analyze and plan tactics or strategies by using his information in the mind. Since they have asymmetric information from the machine, of course, there may be difference between machine decisions and operator decisions. Let's consider a simplified self-driving system. In this system, the driver is behaving like a supervisor and can intervene in system behaviors when there are automation surprises. In this situation, when another car is approaching from the opposite direction, as the person sitting in the car, what are you gonna do? Probably you would think it's better to turn right a little bit in avoid of potential collision, right? However, the machine is trying to stop instead of turning right, because the machine recognized there is a kid on the right front. However, for the driver, the kid is out of his sight. So when he makes decisions, he will not take this kit information into consideration. He knows only partial information the machine knows. 
Think about another situation. A large truck is turning right in front of you. It's a wise decision to slow down or stop immediately, right? However, the machine is trying to go ahead with full speed because it identifies the truck as a highway overpass due to its limited perception capabilities. But as a person, you can easily distinguish a truck and an overpass. In this situation, operator not only knows partial information of the machine, but also the partial information of the real environment. Actually, this is exactly the accident happened with Tesla.、Um, the very big truck, which is easily recognized by human beings, Tesla didn't see it at all. So, explanation about why the machine is making certain decision is sometimes necessary. To reduce opaque and increase transparency for human operator, so that with an explanation in this motivation example, human operator is more likely to do nothing in the first case and interrupt machine's decision in the second case. Let's move to the second part of this presentation, formally defining what makes an explanation for human on the loop. In particular, our framework defines an explanation in terms of three major components. First. Explanation content, describing the types of information provided as a part of an explanation. Second, effect, describing how an explanation can impact the operator's level of confidence. And third, cost, specifying the cost involved in comprehending an explanation. Before defining the explanation content, we should firstly define the information the machine has. Machine information can be defined as a tuple, S and T. S represent the set of states, while T is the transition set. For example, S encodes the status of sensors and actuators of the self-driving cars, while T records how the actuator is gonna change by control logic. Since it is the machine that provide information as the explanation to the operator to improve the transparency, the content of explanation includes partial information of machine state. And partial information of、um, machine transitions. Our typical explanation example in the self-driving system is that the sensor in the left front detected a car, and the sensor in the right front detected a kid. Based on the control logic, you should stop right now. Of course, there may be different explanations with different amounts of information, and different explanation will have different effects. And we model the effect of an explanation as calibrating the operator's belief that the system is behaving in a desirable or undesirable way. On the one hand, when the system is making the right adaptation decision and with additional information supplemented by an explanation, the operator is more likely to accept the machine decision without interference. On the other hand, the machine may sometimes make a decision that is undesirable. In these cases. Additional information in an explanation may inform the operator of this undesirable behavior and encourage the operator to intervene. So the explanation effect can be formally defined as a function mapping a pair of true positive and true negative probabilities to another pair of true positive and true negative probabilities. True positive x denotes the likelihood that the operator approves a right adaptation decision by the machine. While the true negative y describes the human interference following an incorrect adaptation decision, false negative can be determined by the true positive, that is one minus x, describing the situation of unnecessary human interference for a correct decision. Similarly, false positive denoting the likelihood that the operator approves a wrong adaptation decision by the machine can be determined by the true negative, that is one minus y. And then the effect of an explanation on the operator can be modeled as reducing the probability of the operator making false negative and false positive errors. More specifically, operator initially have some true positive and true negative probabilities based on his current information. However, with explanation, his information on the machine will be increased, and the probability of true positive and true negative can be enhanced, as shown in. Delta x and delta y here. Usually, the more information in the content of an explanation provided from the machine, the higher delta x and delta y should be. However, explanation is not for free. It also brings with cost. 
Operator might be annoyed due to the overload of information. Operator may also need time and energy to comprehend this information. So, with the cost and effect, it's not so obvious when to provide explanation. Too much, system will be slow to respond to adaptation needs. Too little, human may not be effective to interrupt. That's the reason a system should balance a trade-off the cost and effect in explanation brands. Now, let me show you how to decide whether an explanation should be provided based on probabilistic model checking. We use PRISM, which supports reasoning about Markov decision process and synthesizing a strategy that can maximize the expected utility. In the PRISM model, the human operator and the machine are separately specified as a process that can be composed in the Markov decision process model. Human module can receive explanation from the machine as the non-determinism and perform interference as the stochastic behavior. A part of machine behavior is shown in this figure. Firstly, the machine will make a decision, either right or wrong. If it's the right decision, machine can choose providing an explanation to human or not, which is the non-determinism. Actually, giving explanation or not are different strategies the machine can make. After that, machine will enter a stage either with human interference or without human interference. For example, these two states represent two good states with high utility where machine makes a good decision and perform that decision without human interference. While these two represent two bad states where machine makes a good decision but human reject. And this figure depicts the behavior of the human. Specifically, human have some initial true positive and true negative probabilities based on his information. Then, if he received any explanation as shown in the upper part, the probability of true positive and true negative will be changed by delta x and delta y, respectively. But if he didn't receive, the probabilities will remain the same. Next, the human can interrupt the machine decisions or not based on this true positive and true negative probabilities. This is how I model the machine and human module in PRISM, but we don't need to dive into the code details. And this is how I define the system rewards, which comprise of two parts, machine performance and explanation cost. Machine performance is calculated based on whether the system enters a good state or bad state based on the machine decision and human interference. Hope you still remember the good states and the bad states with different colors in machine module. Explanation cost is actually based on whether human receives the explanation or not. Here we simplified the cost as an abstract value that could represent, for example, the human annoyance due to the overload of explanation information or time delays due to the explanation comprehension. With the modules and reward definition, we can specify the property here to find the maximum system rewards with the strategy whether this, uh, the machine should provide the explanation or not. To further investigate under what conditions an explanation should be provided, we statically analyze the Markov decision process model that I just described in a region of the state space, which is projected over three dimensions. The first one is the cost of mistakes describing the utility difference between the good state and the bad state a system enters. The second one is the explanation effect, the delta x and delta y. And the third one is the cost of explanation. And this cube encompasses all the conditions when it is beneficial to explain in the state space, while the remaining part of this three-dimensional state space represent the unnecessary conditions. We can have the following three conclusions from the graph. First, when the cost of mistakes is close to zero, there are less conditions where the explanation will be provided than those in a high cost of mistakes. Second, when the explanation effect is not obvious, which means the human cannot gain much useful information from the explanation to increase the probabilities of true positive and true negative. Explanation is not necessary for those conditions. Third, when the cost of explanation increases, 
the chance of providing explanation will decrease, as it is less likely the benefits could outweigh its cost. These conclusions are all consistent with our intuitions. Actually, this figure represents the explanation for a novice, while this figure depicts the conditions for an expert who has more information and is initialized with a higher probability of true positive and true negative. And the differences between these two figures show that the cube for a novice is much bigger than that for an expert. This matches our expectation that a novice operator may need to be provided with an explanation more frequently than an expert. Beyond that, there are some more questions to be investigated, such as how to acquire the initial true positive and true negative probabilities, and how to obtain the explanation effect, delta x and delta y, how to obtain the cost for different operators, also how to find the optimal information as an explanation. Here we investigate the explanation for human on the loop. What about human in the loop? How to consider the time difference between system decision making and human interference? Well, these are all questions to be solved later within our explanation framework. To summarize, in this work, we provide an explanation approach for human on the loop. Firstly, I introduce why we need explanation, then formally define three major components constituting an explanation and how the explanation can affect system behaviors. In the third part, we use the formal methods to capture the behaviors of the human and the machine to reading about when we need to provide an explanation as a strategy. This is the end of this presentation. Thank you for your attention.